Are you designing a quilt in EQ8? Then you'll need to know how to use these fabric tools to make your quilt shine. Stick around. Hi everybody, Cynthia here. I'm in my quilt lab and I've been using EQ8 for several years now, so I thought I would do a quick tutorial on the fabric tools that are in the design side of the quilt work table. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pick a, a quick quilt project, and I'm just gonna pick one of these easy quilts here, just to have something to work with as we discuss all that fun design fabric tools. Gonna be in the design tab, fabric tools, and here are the tools that we are talking about today. When uh, you open this first up, it'll often be defaulted to the paintbrush. And you'll see that the paintbrush has five paintbrush options. And usually that first one is defaulted. I'll talk a little bit more in depth about each of these five different paintbrushes in a, a future video. But the paintbrush is a pretty basic idea if you've used any of the uh, Adobe programs or paintbrush. It's basically a, a, a point and click. So for instance, if I pick this pretty purple fabric and I want to add it, I just start clicking away and it gets added. Uh, just as a quick uh, additional thing, if I um, pick a different fabric and if I hold down this control key while I click this second border here, so I'm holding the control and I click, it's going to do that entire border for me. Just a, a little quick feature to get going. And then of course the other five ones here, I'll do the same thing just in a slightly different manner. All right, let's move on to spray can. You'll notice that when I change it to that pretty paintbrush, move the spray can, isn't that cute? It's those little aerosol spray cans. I think that's adorable. Spray can is very similar to a paintbrush only. It does a little bit more thinking involved when you hit that click button. It's gonna look at the block and decide what is similar. So for instance, if I'm still gonna keep this pretty dark purple, if I go to this first block, so this is the block right here, you'll notice there's a sashing around each of the block. So it's just gonna look at the block. If I do a click right here on this pink one, it's gonna do that entire diagonal line. See paint, the uh, whereas paintbrush just does one at a time, spray can has an algorithm that looks at the block and says, hey, these are all similar, let's paint them all the same color. Now, if you don't like that, or if that seems a little confusing, there is a second option down here. Underneath of it, there's the spray can, and there's a second spray. It's a, It does it backwards. It lets you select it first so that you can see what you're selecting, and then spray it. So I'm gonna click this option. I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna click the, uh, the blue ones. So you see a little light green outline of all of the similar shapes and it's letting you know what it's gonna color when you select your fabric. So let's select that light purple and you'll notice they all turn light purple. So that's the spray can. It's a pretty cool little feature. Should help you color the blocks a little quicker. Let's move on. All right, so we're moving on to swap color. There's the fun little icon. Looks very similar to the button. The swap color is just like what it sounds like. It's going to swap two options from what it is to what you want. So you'll notice that in my box right now, I have the, the same color that's selected for the, the border here. So if I click this right now, nothing will happen. But if I go back to this pretty purple and I say I want all of this teal color fabric to be changed to purple and I click it, it's going to do all of them automatically. Now the one thing you need to remember is that it's gonna click all of the colors. So for instance, it did the outside border plus all the stuff that are actually inside the blocks as well. Once again, let me undo that. Uh, just like the spray can, it has a select and then swap feature. So for instance, if you're not entirely sure where all of, for instance, this lime green fabric is, it's gonna show you once you click it and then you can go and click your fabric. All 
The next button we have is the eyedropper, and it should be feel pretty similar as well since you see this image a lot, or this button a lot in different image manipulation programs like Paint or any of the Adobe products. So it's your basic eyedropper. Look, there it is, cute little icon. If I click, it sucks up that color or that fabric, and it pops over here in the palette so you can see a little bit bigger of it. And um, you'll notice, though, that after I clicked it, it popped back to the previous tool I was using, which in this case was Swap Color. And the reason it did that, let me click the eyedropper again, is because often there's this button right here that says Toggle Automatic to the Tool Snapping. And what that button says is that after I've clicked the eyedropper and I've sucked in my fabric, I want to go back to the previous tool I was using. It's a, a shortcut feature that EQ8 offers. If you don't like that, you can toggle that off. So right now I have it off. So if I use this eyedropper again, you'll notice with each click, it's staying on the eyedropper. It's not going back to any of the tools. That's just a feature there if you're interested in using it. I uh, just want to do a quick point out there. There are two other options here in the eyedropper, the eyedropper fabric and the eyedropper color. And this is kind of cool. So for instance, this all quilt is all in fabrics, but let's say I want to change it to just plain uh, colors. If I take my eyedropper under the color eyedropper and I go over to the teal, it's going to take me to the basic color palette, find the basic color, and now I can color it with just a plain color. Similarly, if you're in a, if you're in a, a design that has that was just designed in all colors, you can do the same thing with the fabric eyedropper. It's going to find the closest color scheme of the palette you have in there. So we'll just do a reverse. And there's the closest. Now I do want to point out that when you use the fabric eyedropper or the color eyedropper, it's only going to find a sample or matching sample of what you have in your palette. So for instance, there's probably about 30 different swatches here. That's what I'm limited to. Now if I had a bright orange color, the closest one it's going to be that. In it. So if I'm looking for an exact match, I need to make sure that I have more examples in my swatches, both for fabrics and for colors, if I want to find an exact match when I'm using that tool. All right, let's move on to fussy cutting. I love fussy cutting. And to really showcase this one, I'm going to hit this zoom in button over here and just zoom in on one of the blocks. And I'm going to switch it out with a different print so you can, since this is kind of basic, something that's a little bit more obvious to see. So I'm going to put a big floral there in the center. I'm going to come up to fussy cutting. And this is really cool. All you got to do is you do a click and a drag. And even if you go off of the patch where you're um, moving fabric, it will still move the fabric. And this is a fun tool uh, because it lets you really, really place what you want to see there. So let's say I want that pretty pink flower in the center. It's also nice because you'll see that the fabric swatches overlap or are tiled. So there's the tile right here in the center. So it lets you make sure that if you're designing a quilt and you want to really showcase the fabric or something specific in the print, you can do so without showing those lines of the tiling. Love the fussy cut. Let's move on to the rotate fabric because it's kind of similar. I am going to switch out the fabric once again so you can see it a little bit better. This will be a little easier to see. So rotate the exactly what it sounds like. You're rotating the fabric. You'll see that there's a few options here, and I'll talk about a little bit about those in a future video as well. Um, I typically just keep the, the simple clit. It's just the 90 degree rotation. So there's four of them. One, two, three, four. You notice it's not very different with this because it's a, a diagonal print. There's only really a couple different options. If I were to do the advanced and say I only wanted a 10 degree angle and I want to have several different rotations, when I come back over here to click, 
slightly different rotation. And that's an easy way to get that fabric lined up the way you want it to. Now remember that this uh, program doesn't take into account any bias cutting. So the original print was diagonal, so that was the normal way it ought to look. Right now, if I were to cut the fabric, it would be on the bias. Just a little, going to throw that out there. All right, so the last button is one of my favorites. I love randomize because it's just so fun and funky. It's this little wand here, and look at the cute little mouse. It's so cute. I love this. So randomize, it, as the description below says, gives you a fun way to color, recolor your entire quilt with just one click of the mouse. And I'll flip through a few of these so you can see how strange some of the options can get. I really like it because it it lets me look at the, my finished quilts in a different manner. So typically when I'm using the randomize, I've designed my entire quilt. I'm finished with it. I put the fabrics in it that I wanted. I have saved it to my project sketchbook. And now I'm just going to do some randomizing and see what kind of fun EQ8 has to offer. So I'm just going to click on it. Here we go. And you'll see it's going to, with each click, it's going to change that, that color scheme. And some of them will be pretty and some of them will be not so pretty. But it's kind of fun because it'll show you things in your quilt that you didn't necessarily see with your original design. Like this one, for instance, has a nice dark background as opposed to the, the white background that the original design had. It gives a different flair of what those diagonal stripes look like, what those uh, star blocks look like. It's a lot of fun. And of course, there's several options under the randomize where you can limit the hue and the saturation, the brightness. You can map to colors or map to fabrics. Um, it's a lot. Of, it's just a lot of fun to play with. I always recommend um, doing some randomizing of your designs just to see what you know what hops up. And of course, if you like some of these designs, go ahead and click that add to project sketchbook so you can save it for the future. So the last and final button over here in the fabric tools is the open library and just like under the block tools this is just going to take you to the fabric li uh, library and I'll just do a little quick overview of it I'll collapse everything so there's our libraries typically you'll look like this with just the colors you can search by colors you'll see that they all show up there. You can search by the manufacturer. Yes, EQ8 has a ton of different manufacturers. Look at all that Moda, RJR, Wyndham. And then they've gone further to divide them up into themes. So stripes, plaids, paisleys, florals, leaves, animals, reproductions. The thing that I just, I want to point out a couple more things before I leave you for the day here is the search function. I use the search feature a lot. When you click it, it pops up a menu of by note card or by color. And I typically use by color for this. But the note card is fun too, especially if you have like a specific designer in mind. You don't know where to find it. So let's just put in, you know, a little K facet. Everybody's a K facet fan, right? And I do the search function. It pops up and said, hey, we have 16 K fabrics. So if I click OK, there they all are. Pretty fun, right? I want to make each picture, each picture a little bigger. I can come down here and click the large one so you can see it a little bit better. And if I hit the note card, it'll give me a little information about each fabric swatch. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed my little walkthrough of the fabric tools under the design tab for EQ8. If you have any questions about what I covered or if there's something specific that you'd like to see in a future tutorial, please put that in the comment below. And if you liked this page or found it useful, give me that old thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you want to see my next video, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, I really appreciate you stopping by my quilt lab and I'll see you next time. Take care.